Clinton Northway here, Operations Chief with the Alaska Incident Management Team managing the Chalkitsa Complex up north in the Yukon Flats, which is a cluster of four fires in and around the community of Chalkitsa. Uh, the Vision Oscar on the Frozen Calf Fire, currently operationally we are continuing to strengthen and reinforce the lines from Otig Lake north up into the community of Chalkitsa. Meaning that is we have operational assets on the ground using it pumps and hose lays to reinforce and strengthen that line directly adjacent to the community. That will continue the next few days as we uh, look to strengthen those primary lines so the fire doesn't get across those lines and threaten the community of Chalkitsik. As we continue north along the Black River, we get up to the Chahaley Lake area, which again, we have a number of tactical assets in there, continuing to reinforce and strengthen those primary lines, again, to reduce any further fire growth towards the community of Chalkitsik. We identified an area, which we're calling the Northeast area of Ch Ch Chahaley Lake, where we've inserted a group of smoke jumpers and two 20 person crews along with some various overhead to contain a 150 acre slop over across the Chehaley Slough. So that is in progress right now. As we continue further down the Black River, there's a number of identified allotments and structures that were directly impacted by the fire in the previous week. So we've, we've gone in there with a number of different tactical assets and crews to uh, mop up and secure those sites as we travel from west to east, as numbered here, Bravos one through four. As soon as we complete those sites, we continue further east to some more identified sites within the fire perimeter that were impacted, which we cannot currently see on this map. Okay, we'll start now with the river group on the Chow Chahaley complex. And, and what they've been done is they've been tasked to work along the Black River, identifying and mitigating any hazards to Alaska Native allotments and permitted cabins along the Black River. What they've done in there is the fire has impacted those sites, so we've had to go in there and set up structure protection measures to protect those identified values. Basically, we've gone in there, the fire has crossed over them, we were able to respond afterwards, get back in there and secure those sites. That continues to do so. We've identified seven different sites that are within the current fire perimeter, four of which have been completed and we're actively doing three right now. Just an overall summary of what's been going on right in this general area as far as uh, fire behavior and fire weather in conjunction with rainy conditions, which most of Alaska is experiencing right now. Up in the Yukon Flats, they are not experiencing those conditions right now. So without the rain in conjunction with the high fuels conditions, meaning fire indices, which are at extreme levels right now, it would take several days actually for those conditions to be moderated due to rain. You know, in, talk, in talking with some of the assets we have as far as incident meteorologists, fire behavior analysts, and things of that nature, we would take several days of wetting rain in order for those indices to moderate and moderate the fire behavior.